Okay, so as you can see, we're in a tasting room at the Calvary with Tom. Uh, what have we got here, Tom? So we've got the Dark Age, which is a beer that we just brewed yesterday. This is one that we finished around three weeks ago. Okay. So this has been conditioning for around a week and a half now. We just tapped it yesterday, so this is ready to go. Fantastic. And this one is the Bronx, which was brewed around four weeks ago. Again, this is ready to go in perfect condition. So obviously we've got a demonstration of um, two of our sort of uh, regular beers that we've got at the moment. Cannot be fresh keg beer at a brewery. This is just camping in my eyes. Well, it's the first time I've been to a brewery and you've done fresh kegs, so it's a good experience. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you the dark age first. Okay, I'm going to take it up to the camera. So we've got a very dark beer here. Uh, almost looks like a, a deep, is, is a hint of redness hit of a ruby red in the beer. There you go. So the redness that comes through in these beers is very much from the roast barley because it has a, an, an almost sort of um, redness to the, to the deep colour that it gives from roast barley. But it's also got a chocolate malt in which, um, which gives it obviously quite a sort of um, a, a stringent chocolatey, almost caramelly sort of cocoa flavour. But then we've also got the crystal which you saw upstairs that we were demonstrating by the crystal mill. And all of these are blended together to give you a, a nice, almost like coffee, coffee-like characteristic, which you can really smell oh, yeah, in the aroma. Yeah, yeah, and what you pick up is that the the sharpness from the roast barley and from the roasted uh, notes that we get from all of the grain come through with the light bitterness and give you a really powerful initial flavour, which is almost like a uh, sort of an espresso sharp coffee characteristic. I'm getting fresh cut black grass as well. In a note. Yeah, that's right. Well, we use, we're using perle as a, a hop, which gives you a slight aroma on the on the grassy side as well. Okay. But it's quite a delicate beer, so even though you get the, the roast and the bitterness and the characteristics from a lot of the, a lot of the grain, you also get a delicate sort of aromatic finish as well. So Ooh, that is nice. So it's quite a smooth beer for a dark. Yes, and the ABV on that is that's four percent. So four percent. Yeah, that's, that's right. Dark age. Yeah. So I'm getting. What are you getting, Chris? The sweetness. the sweetness comes on your lips a little bit. Yeah, there's definitely a, there's a delicate sweetness to it. That's because we mash at a temperature that leaves uh, residual sweetness, so you get a nice nice full body there as well. It's not massively carbonated, so no. you get a full wash of the liquid without the carbonation interfering with that taste. Mm. You get like the lemongrass and the coffee. Definitely you really coffee. Like lemongrass. Yeah, big big coffee, and, and there's almost a piney texture as well, which comes from the from the hops that we use the, the aromatic hops. And there's also new world hops. You used to get that. One. Um, it's, it's actually Perle, which is which is uh, not a new world hop, but it's something that works very well when you're using dark beers. And, but um, but yeah, it's, it, again, it's this fat balance that comes through. You know, it's something from the from the in, in depth mixture we give in the grain and uh, coming through into the final hops and the bitterness. It all blends well together and gives you almost a sweet, delicate coffee aromatic beer. Absolutely. That is that is quite different. I see what you mean about that it. The grass. Yeah, it's like yeah. a freshly mold lawn lemongrass. It's really, yeah. really nice. It's at yeah. the sides and the back, so it's coming, it's coming with a bit of a That's right. Yeah, yeah. Great. Great. Really. That's right. Really good. Okay, so I'm so, going to finish this one, and then we're going to go to the bronze, are we? So the next one is the is the bronze. I'm sure you can help yourself, guys. So if I uh, top top mine up. Okay. So the bronze is literally uh, bronze in colour. Now this one, we're, we're focusing very much more on um, a spice balance. So you can see with this one, it's, um, it's, it's had slightly more conditioning than the last beer. That's because we, um, we cool the beer, leaving residual sugar in there, so the yeast really does some work inside the cask to give it nice conditioning. And what you find with this one is there's, there's an initial bitterness that is followed through again from a delicate sweetness but a really really nice sharp spicy finish so it's got a long hot finish that gives you a really unique sort of um, almost um, sharp but smooth spiciness. So. Yeah, I'm noticing a lot of small bubbles in the last one. Yeah. That's is, right. Is it, I was told by a head brewer of another brewery that the smaller the bubble the better the beer. Is that right? Or? I mean a lot of people regard it as being like champagne with cask ale in the, in the 
the carbon dioxide actually comes from the yeast itself. So where you get the secondary fermentation inside the cask is actually from the fact it can't go anywhere the carbonation, the fermentation is actually entrained into that into that beer. So you get you get bubbles that are actually created from the, the yeast organisms themselves, you know, so that gives you a, a natural carbonate feel. There's there's no well, the CO2 is in there, but it's, it's put in there from the yeast as yeah, opposed yeah. as opposed through uh, injection. Yeah. So what are we getting from the nose, Tom? So so with this, the, the initial nose you get is 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 a slight spicy touch, yeah. but you can also smell a tiny bit of caramel as well, which is which is because we've been using crystal again. But there's also a touch of chocolate in this. It's very very delicate chocolate, which actually brings out the caramel. Right. Yeah. So, and on the initial taste, you'll find. Okay. You'll find there's a, there's a nice, or what I would call a sweet bitterness, oh, yeah. which finishes with a, with a nice, long, hot spice, basically. Yes, yeah. it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a long in, um, a bit of a tang at the beginning, but then it, it builds. Wash. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a building hot bitterness, that's which, right. is, which is what we want. This one is, this one's 4.5% 4, 4. ABV, that's and right. it's the cab brewed in bronze. Yeah. This is in higher, the higher end of the session, but definitely in the session. Absolutely. That's right. So what are you going to taste, Chris? Ooh. It's coming in as a really refreshing with the, the, the crispness coming down the sides of your mouth. Yeah. It's not banging this side of your mouth but to get the that the hop isn't hitting so high but it's it's not a desert one. Yeah. But, but, but it's there definitely it's present. And then that crispness washes down. These are cake beer. Yeah. 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 Can't be cake beer. Cast beer. <laughs> I do apologise. I'm, yeah. I'm new to it. <laughs> I drink balls at the house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cast beer. Yeah, yeah, no, I no, do apologise. No, but again, what, what we're looking for here is a, is a full, all-round balanced spice. You okay. know, and with our beers, we always look for that balance. So whether they're highly hot or whether they're their medium hot levels, we always look for something that balances in there and it gives you a beer that not only has got a fantastic taste but it also has something you can come back to yeah. and drink another and drink another and, it's, yeah. and you feel good all night drinking it, it's just in the morning it hits you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, I find, what I found with this is um, there's two types of like, uh, pale ales and IPAs. This one is the one I prefer where I always like to say if you cut the grapefruit in half, yeah. this is like grabbing some of the fresh of the grapefruit that's the group and, and sucking it and eating it. It's that kind of nice yeah. hot bitterness. And then it's the, the other side, which I'm not overly keen on, is where it's almost like biting into a lemon peel. Yeah. And it's really, this is, yeah. it's not yeah. that, is it? This is, this is definitely it's the lemon flesh. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's, again, it's down to the way we brew the beers and the way we percolate the hops, the way we focus on the aromas with the spices. It always comes out fresh, clean and crisp, you know, which is a characteristic throughout a whole range of beers, basically. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, so yeah, the well, citrus on that. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's fantastic. So um, these are the two beers we, we've just reviewed here. Um, we're going to be reviewing the rest of the range from the Calp Brewery soon. So check out the next video. Thanks for now. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And cheers. One. Okay, we're going to try some of the Calp Experience on cask in this lovely pub, the Chop House. Vegans. Yeah. We'll see what's on the bar. I bet it's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hi, hey, Tom. How are you doing? Hey guys, how are you doing? So, if we just look over at this, what a, what a fantastic range of cast there. So we've got the the Calp Native Storm, 4.4% ABV. Um, here they are here. So what are we getting, Tom? This is Native Storm. So with this drink, you've got a um, almost a, a delicate citrus fruit with a traditional sort of spice. Okay. So you've got that um, what, what I call a traditional British ale texture to it. So it's not overly bitter. It's got a nice balanced body, which is not too sweet. And you'll find almost a piney, fruity, um, spicy texture to it. And a uh, traditional colour as well. It's a lovely colour to it. It's almost a deep amber. Touch a red note in there. Let's get the nose, shall we? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yakida. Hey, Yakida.
or that's like a really good ruby red ale. That's right. So you, you've got you've got the, the complexities of a traditional British drink, but um, which isn't overly complicated, not overly bitter. Yeah. But you've got a nice balanced um, fruity with a, with a touch of pine finish on that. Almost tropical fruits in this one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry, I've already tried mine. <laughs> it's nice, though. I'd like to compliment you on the uh, style of your Worthington glass as well. Oh, I'm facing it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. 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 It's all about the branding. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Do you work for Worthington? I don't know. No, no. Cars and cars are going to buy it. Nice one, yeah. Okay, what am I getting? A free pint. Oh, a <laughs> <laughs> free pint. <laughs> and a lovely, lovely. Picking up a lot of the malt on the end. Very malt. Picking the malt on the end of this one. Malt with the spice. So you'll, yeah. you'll get a, you'll get the malt in the mouth, oh, and you get yeah. the spice on the t on, on your top palate. Yeah. So yeah. it's a yeah. sort of mixture of two, which is very traditional. That's what that's what you get from your traditions, you know. So this is very nice. Mm. Very very nice. Tom, how are you? How you doing? Here we are, look, it's, it's, it's the land, landlord himself. Okay, let's get the landlord in. What a fine selection of you ready, cat ready? scales you've got on here. Yeah. Cheers, thank you. Absolutely wonderful. How's tricks, alright? Yeah, not bad at all, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well? Yeah, not bad at all. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up, but this is an absolutely wonderful yeah. point. Yeah. Very, very, even if it's in there, the, the dodgy glass. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful pint. Um, it's full of complex, tropical fruit flavours with a really good malt finish on the beer. So, thanks for watching. Tune in for a meal, food and meal and beer pairing. I can get drinking uh, in a bit. Cheers. Okay, so we're in custom. Beer and food here, a uh, bit of food here. So, what do we look at with beer and food, Tom? What you're looking for is to get a combination of a, a beer, it's, um, <laughs> tying in with the spices, all the fruits, or all okay. the sauciness in, in a dish. With this particular matching, you've got a spicy beer, which you're looking to effectively cut through the flavours you're getting in, in the gravy and the meats with um, your sausages. So, the first thing you probably want to do is try some of your sausage with the gravy. That's right, just, just wash that down with, um, with a late storm, which should give you a nice spicy finish and almost cut through the uh, gravy. Oh, it does. It does, it really does, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Good. Fantastic. Cheers. Cheers.